Welcome back, uh, Patriots. Welcome to Sons of Liberty 1773. This is indeed where men and women from around the world gather in defense of liberty. I am your host, Bill Bailey, who will be channeling the patriotism of America's founding fathers, such as George Washington, who wrote in his orders on July 9th, 1776, the blessing and protection of heaven are at all times necessary, but especially so in times of public distress and danger. The general hopes and trust that every officer and man will endeavor so to live and act as becomes a Christian soldier, defending the dearest rights and liberties of his country. As dark as our world is looking, I do still manage to find uh, a little sunshine out there. Um, like this great uh, essay I discovered, uh, I want to share some ex excerpts from this incredible essay written by Ayan Hersi Ali, who is a column, columnist at Unheard. She is also a research fellow at Stanford University's Hoover Institution, founder of the AHA Foundation, and host of the Ayan Hersi Ali podcast. Her new book is Pray, Immigration, Islam, and the Erosion of Women's Rights. Her essay is titled, Why I Am Now a Christian. It's about her journey from being a Muslim to being an atheist and now a Christian. Hear her words. And I just took excerpts from this. It's, it's a little long, but it's great. You have to read it, and I will leave the link as a, uh, to her essay as a pinned comment, okay? Why, I'm now, why am I now a Christian? And this is about her life's journey from being a Muslim, then an atheist, and then a Christian. To understand why I became an atheist 20 years ago, you first need to understand the kind of Muslim I had been. I was a teenager when the Muslim Brotherhood penetrated my community in Nairobi, Kenya in 1985. I don't think I had even understood religious practice before the coming of the Brotherhood. I had endured the rituals of Abolutions, prayer, and fasting is tedious and pointless. The Brotherhood preachers left nothing to the imagination. They gave us a choice. Strive to live by the prophet's manual and reap the glorious rewards in the hereafter. On this earth, meanwhile, the greatest achievement possible was to die as a martyr for the sake of Allah. The most striking quality of the Muslim Brotherhood was their ability to transform me and my fellow teenagers from passive believers into activist almost overnight. Sounds like what the uh, liberal campuses do to um, uh, the American youth in this country, doesn't it? They go in as a Christian conservative and they get ejected out the other side as a godless um, atheist. Continuing. We urge fellow Muslims to pray and demand that non-Muslims convert to Islam. During Islamic study sessions, we shared with the preacher in charge of the sessions our worries. We were told in no uncertain terms that we could not be loyal to Allah and Muhammad while also maintaining friendships and loyalties towards the unbelievers. If they explicitly rejected our summons to Islam, we were to hate and curse them. Here, a special hatred was res reserved for one subset of unbelievers, the Jew. We cursed the Jews multiple times a day and expressed horror disgust and anger at the litany of offenses he had allegedly committed. The Jew had betrayed, betrayed our prophet. He had occupied the holy mosque in Jerusalem. He continued to spread corruption in the heart, mind, and soul. So what changed, and why do I call myself a Christian now? Part of the answer is global. Western civilization is under threat from three different but related forces— the resurgence of great power, authoritarianism, and expansionism in the forms of Chinese Communist Party, Vladimir Putin's Russia, the rise of global Islamism, which threatens to mobilize a vast population against the West, and the viral spread of woke ideology, which is eating into the moral fiber of the next generation. We endeavor to fend off these threats with modern secular tools, 
military, economic, diplomatic, and technological efforts to defeat, bribe, persuade, appease, and surveil. And yet, with every round of conflict, we find ourselves losing ground. We are either running out of money with our national debt in the tens of trillions of dollars, or we are, or we are losing our lead in the technological race with China. But we can't fight off these formidable forces unless we can answer the question, what is it that unites us? The only credible answer, I believe, lies in the desire to uphold the legacy of the Judeo-Christian tradition. The legacy consists of an elaborate set of ideas and institutions designed to safeguard human life, freedom, and dignity. From the nation state and the rule of law to the institution of, of science, health, and learning. And so I have come to realize that my atheist friends failed to see the woods for the trees. The wood is a civilization built on the Judeo-Christian tradition. It is the story of the West, warts and all. To me, the freedom of conscience and speech is perhaps the greatest benefit of Western civilization. It does not come naturally to man. It is a product of centuries of debate within Jewish and Christian communities. It was these debates that advanced science and reason, diminished cruelty, suppressed superstitions, and built institutions to order and protect life, while guaranteeing freedom to as many people as possible. Unlike Islam, Christianity outgrew its dogmatic stage. It became increasingly clear that Christ's teachings implied not only a circumscribed role for religion as something separate from politics, it also implied compassion for the sinner and humility for the believer. Atheists believed that with the rejection of God, we would enter an age of reasons and intelligent humanism. But the God hole, the void left by the retreat of the church, has merely been filled by a jumble of irrational quasi-religious dogma. The result is a world where modern cults prey on the dislocated masses, offering them spurious reasons for being in action, mostly by engaged in virtue, sig virtue signaling, theater on behalf of the victimized minority of our supposedly doomed planet. The line often attributed to G.K. Chesterton has turned into a prophecy. When men choose not to believe in God, they do not thereafter believe in nothing they then become capable of believing in anything. In this nihilistic vacuum, the challenge before us becomes civiliz civilizational. We can't withstand China, Russia, and Iran if we can't explain to our populations why it matters that we do. We can't fight woke ideology if we can't defend the civilization that it is determined to destroy. And we can't counter Islamism with pure secular tools. To win the hearts and minds of Muslims here in the West, we have to offer them something more than videos and TikTok. The lesson I learned from my years within the Muslim Brotherhood was the power of a unifying story embedded in the foundation text of Islam to attract, engage, and mobilize the Muslim masses. Unless we offer something as meaningful, I fear the erosion of our civilization will continue, and fortunately, there is no need to look for some new age concoction or medication of mindfulness. Christianity has it all. You will find the link um, to her complete essay in a pinned comment on this video. Please read it. It's a powerful essay. And it comes from somebody that was in the Muslim world, uh, that practiced, practiced um, Islam, uh, that was in the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, and left it and said, I can't handle it. I'm just going to be an atheist. And, uh, and then she found out that that was as bad, if maybe not even, maybe even worse in some ways, uh, before she um, uh, accepted uh, the Western culture of our Judeo-Christian values and seen them as godly uh, and has become a Christian. It's a great story. I, I love stories like this. I do believe, um, you know, and I was on some... Um, different Christian forums looking this up. I actually stumbled across a YouTube video where someone shared it about the mark of the beast is actually um, Allah and Muhammad and that this headband and the armband that the um, uh, Islamic holy war warriors wear uh, is actually 
666, uh, and you can, a lot of research on this you can look into, um, but um, uh, that it's demonic, and um, uh, the force of evil is the um, Islamic religion uh, talked about in um, uh, the book of Revelation. Uh, just one theory, okay, but um, uh, I do see a lot of evil when you're lopping people's heads off if they don't uh, convert to your religion and um, uh, the atrocities uh, that we saw from ISIS and what just happened in um, um, Israel. Pure evil. I mean, really evil. Um, not trying to paint all Muslims with a broad brush, but I'm just saying, you know, uh, if, if my Christian's religion was doing that, I probably wouldn't be a Christian. Um, so anyways, um, I believe what's coming is going to be bi biblical. Our greatest tool against evil is praying daily to the Almighty. Um, I, I just believe in the power of prayer. I, I believe um, uh, we need God on our side, and if God is on our side, who can be against us? Uh, but anyways, keep praying and keep prepping. Our um, freeze dryer arrives tomorrow. Hopefully it comes undamaged and um, I can do a couple videos as we learn how to freeze dry stuff and share them with you. Uh, anyways, may God keep you and bless you and your family safe. Uh, by the way, uh, you can see I'm in the flannels. We, I am north of the uh, 45th parallel, truly up north. And uh, it is flannel season. We don't have any snow yet, uh, but I know it's coming. But, the, you know, the nights are dipping into the 30s now. Uh, pretty nice day today. Uh, matter of fact, I'm getting ready to... Um, I'll edit this video later. I'm going to go get in my deer blind and um, uh, enjoy a little bow hunting action. Uh, so anyways, um, until next time, Sons of Liberty out. See you guys.